Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin PF, and on today's episode we're going to go back to Compass Box. It's been a while since I've covered a Compass Box, but I have covered some other ones before, namely the Great King Street Artist Blend, the Compass Box No Name, and the Peat Monster, which turned out to be one of my favourite whiskies. But if you want to go and check those out, I'll drop links up here throughout the show, and you can go check them out at your leisure. But for today, we've got the Spice Tree. Now that's being protected currently by coin number 146. The uh, challenge coins, aka whiskey hats, this one is 146. If you want this one or any others in the collection, then go into the description below and check out the information on how to get hold of these. Compass Box are a pretty good company for reviewers like me because they're advocates of kind of extreme transparency to the point where it's got them in trouble a couple of times. The spice tree is kind of no stranger to controversy. When it was first released, it lasted about a year, but then the SWA, they uh, threatened kind of legal action against Compass Box because of the way that they chose to finish it at the time, which was to introduce flat staves into the finishing process, which the SWA deemed was kind of non-traditional. And that's what they're there for, right? They're there to protect, protect the tradition of scotch and to make sure that it, it you know, isn't changed too much or pushed into the world of dilution. Stuff like, uh, my best example of that is kind of like Canadian whiskey. Now in, in Canada, you can call any whiskey a rye, whether it's got rye in it or not. You can put rye on the label, which seems a little bit odd to me. I think it should be a little bit more controlled. Anyway, but the best thing about Compass Box is they share absolutely everything. Now I'm not gonna go into horrendous detail onto this because it's so available, I'll pop a link into the description below. So if you are one of like kind of like the top tier whiskey nerds like myself, and people like the Whiskey Geek on YouTube, you should go and check him out. He's a kind of a newish channel, and he will go into the depth of that sort of thing. So if you're interested in that, go and check him out. But you can go onto their website and find out every single bit of information you probably want to know about this. And if you don't find it, then you can drop them an email and they'll tell you the information. They're really really good like that. But what I can tell you about this is that it's a blend of Scotch whiskies, just like the Peat Monster was for kind of peated stuff with a bit of extra stuff in there. This one is 60% Klein Leash, 20% Dalyuin, and 20% Tierninch. Kind of really understated distilleries, especially kind of Klein Leash. I mean, if you're watching Whiskey Tube videos like this one, you've probably heard of Aquavite, and he's a huge advocate of Klein Leash and is pushing out Klein Leash into the world with his evangelism, stuff like that. A little bit worried about that because the more we push this, stu this stuff and push Klein Leash out into the world, the less they'll be available for us. But that's another story. That's another story. Now, after the initial maturation period, they take all of those three distillery whiskies and revat them all together and then they separate it all out into, into new casks that they've hashed together themselves. Now again, more information about that is on their website. I'm not gonna go into the individual types of casks they've used because there's a lot of them. If you are interested in that, then check out the links in the description below and you can see more stuff about what they do. Really quite interesting. Anyway, let's talk about this whiskey itself. It's a non-chill filtered, natural colored, 46%, pretty damn good if you ask me. Let's get onto the nose and see what the actual flavor's like. Now, for me, there's some honey sweetness there. It's almost a kind of like cereally nature to it. I often call this kind of flavor profile a bit herbally, it's a bit grassy. It's interesting, it's got that, that, that two sweetness, the sweetness and the grassy together. Really nice, I like that kind of thing. It's really clean and fresh. Let's try on the palette. Now, if you like the nose, I don't think there's going to be much that surprises you about the palate. More honey, more of them kind of herbal, kind of cereally notes. On top of that, there's a little bit of kind of a spicy element there as well. I would say stuff like cinnamons, cloves, that sort of thing. It doesn't kind of push yourself into the kind of Christmassy end of that kind of clove spectrum, but it's definitely there. Mm. The finish 
It's long and sweet. Maybe even a kind of weird tang of kind of orangey citrus, but that might just be my palate. As we all know, tasting is a subjective thing. You might taste something completely different to me, but you know, for me, I get that kind of like bit of oranginess on the back there, but it's really nice and warming, nice and viscous fluid. Now in the UK, this sells for about 45 pounds. So it's not a cheap whiskey by any stretch. You know, I mean, obviously that's gonna be cheap to some people. It's gonna be really expensive to other people. But in the grand scheme of things, it fits nicely, nicely into that kind of mid price range, you know, less than 50 pounds whiskey. Now uh, you would be fooled into thinking that because it's a blended whiskey, if, uh, if you're kind of a, a non connoisseur or whatever, you might've heard the term blended whiskey and might have pushed this out of your minds because it says blend on it. But I really think you'd be doing yourself a disservice for not checking it out. Now, as I said on my Peat Monster review, that's kind of your, your love letter to peated whiskey. It's mostly the Freug. This is really their kind of antithesis of that. You know, it's, it's not peated at all. It's got some really nice kind of herbally notes to it. It's not sherried either. So it's a really nice, calming, kind of gentle dram with a bit of extra spice influence to give it that extra dynamic. Now, if you ever tried any Klein Leash whatsoever and you've liked it, you definitely 100% enjoy this. And it's a good price, £45, considering what you're getting for it, I would say it's highly recommended. And it's one of those great whiskies where, you, I mean, sure, you can watch a video like this while you're, while you're, you're sipping along to it, but you can also print off their, their sheet, their data sheet, and you can read exactly what they're doing on it. And they, uh, they make no kind of qualms about the controversy that they had back in the early 2000s. That's all disappeared now. This has been kind of reworked and it's been re-released. So it's none of that nonsense is going on, which is fine. And to be honest with you, I don't really care about that sort of nonsense. That kind of innovation, I think, is something that's good. Scotch can keep their stuff and, and carry on doing what they're doing, but I'm enjoying that other countries are experimenting a little bit with their, their maturation and their wood and their distilling processes and things like that to try and make something a little bit more dynamic that isn't just kind of copying Scotch. But there you go, that's my thoughts on it. I would say this is definitely a thumbs up from me. If you haven't tried it, but you're into your Scotch whiskey in any way, shape or form, I, f I find it very unlikely that you won't like this. But if you haven't liked it, I still would love to hear from you. Drop a comment below and let me know if you didn't like it or if you did like it, or even if you just want to say hi.